Welcome back. In case you are just joining us, Karibu Tena Sana. This is Good Morning Kenya. I am Jane Wamboy, and you are right in time for the second part of today's program where we get to have a look at what the papers have for us today. Remember, our communication platforms still remain open. The hashtag to use is Good Morning Kenya on Twitter. Our official station handle across the social media platforms is at KBC Channel One. Our individual handles are at Ray Manyara, at Doreen Arange, at Victor Olo and at Jane Wamboy. Let's start off with the Daily Nation. The front page is there for you. Not too many stories have been featured here, but looking at the main read, it reads um, 15 counties to watch in state house race. And these are counties that have been um, narrowed in on looking at the 2013 general elections down to 2017 and what they potentially stand to, you know, um, what direction they potentially stand to steer the, gen uh, the general elections that we are expecting to have next year at uh, the 10th of August. We'll be coming to those details in a bit. And also these particular counties seem to um, con constitute about a third of the entire new voters that were estimated uh, or rather projected to have been registered by the IEBC. Coming to the other stories that have been featured here, the story concerning the increased fees that has locked out thousands of students out of university, and that this is specific to Nairobi University. And uh, after the, the university's director of corporate affairs, that is John Orindi, said about 1,971 government-sponsored students are yet to report four weeks since the admission began. And come this Friday, it will be the closing of that admission period for this particular uh, trimester that they are in, saying that so many of them have failed to turn up and most of the, the reasons that they have uh, received so far is in regards to the increased fees that the university has um, had to increase in order to make up for the shortage of financing. Coming to the other stories that have been featured here, looking at the back page of the Daily Nation, this is in regards to driving schools that might be might uh, face closure. Looking at the newly um, the new NTSA rules that requires all driving schools and now to register afresh and receive permits and licenses. About uh, let's see. 500 driving schools are set to, you know, go through this entire process of being registered afresh and getting permits, and so many of them might not meet the requirements, both uh, looking at infrastructure and personnel when it comes to the new rules that NTSA has put forth. And the last story here is in regards to what happened this past weekend in Kampala following the explosion that happened. Um, and uh, Museveni has spoken to this regard and said that the uh, explosion that happened Saturday night has been linked to a terrorist attack which killed one person more details coming up in a bit Victor and on the front page of the star newspaper one Kenya Alliance a fresh bid to star up 2022 campaigns that is on the front page of the star that is Oka fresh bid to star up 2022 campaign Principals fear that they may become irrelevant if they do not act quickly. Uh, chiefs want to avoid playing catch-up with the DP Ruto and ODM's Raila Dinga. That's what's on the front page of the Star newspaper. And there is that story there of a family of young mom who was killed uh, in 2012, who was allegedly killed by a British soldier in uh, Nanyuki. And now they're crying for justice uh, after all those years. After, um, what should I say, after a revelation by some of the witnesses who uh, were there during that time, and now they're saying that they need justice from the government, both from Kenya and the British government. DP allies capitalize on MP Junes Raila government remark. That is on the front page as well as Odinga men take backstage as ex-Prime Minister Kraft's new team. And uh, still on the front page, 20 police officers killed, self, or murdered since January 2021. I'll give you more details briefly. And uh, the story says that is uh, the family of a 21-year-old woman from Bajengo Estate in Nyuki, allegedly murdered by a British soldier in 2012, is optimistic that they will get justice. Uh, yesterday, a United Kingdom newspaper published a story of former British Army training in, uh, unit in Kenya, that is Batuk. So just detailing the occurrences of the fateful night 
it revealed that the identity of the British soldier who allegedly stabbed a Kenyan mother to death before dumping a body in a hotel septic tank after a night of partying and is widely, in the, widely known in the army. The story continues to say that the naked body of Agnes Wanjiku, Wanjiro, rather, 21 then, was found at the Lions Court Inn Hotel in Nanyuki nearly a decade ago by a maintenance worker who noticed a foul smell. The family claimed that the British and Kenyan authorities have snaked or have staged a cover-up to maintain a diplomatic relations. Um, but so far, the British, high, uh, the British High Commissioner in Kenya has also issued a statement over the same, and they said that they will continue with the investigations, and the government, both the governments, will give more details on that. We just hope that the family will get justice. And finally, IT intern surrenders after murder of KMTC girlfriend. Man walked to local police station to report he had killed his girlfriend. The story says that a 27-year-old IT intern surrendered to police in Loitoktok, Kajado County, after he allegedly stabbed his medical student girlfriend to death. Now, Samson Kemoy walked to the local police station and reported he had visited his 22-year-old girlfriend, Mariam Chepchirchir. She is a student at the local Kenya Medical Training College. A quarrel and physical fight broke out on Saturday morning, and Kemoy said that he stabbed Chepchirchir and left her for dead. My question is, where did we just drop humanity? We should go back and find it. We should just trace it back and find where we dropped humanity. Um, in the last couple of, a week or so, the same incident happened. Uh, we all know Tirob, mm -hmm. another also died, and then again here. Where did we all drop humanity. As a nation, we should just make a U-turn, a quick U-turn, all of us, and go back and find it. It will help us moving forward. All right. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Let me just pick it up from there on the question of where did we drop our humanity because again you've also mentioned about Agnes T. Mm. and this morning the People's Daily has covered her story very extensively, I mean three pages and this is simply because the family now says that uh, the husband who's the main suspect in that yeah. murder case has uh, now already sold one of her properties at... Um, nine million Kenyan shillings and there was a plot for him to distribute the other plots six of them that T. Rob owned so now the family wants the government to step in and look for ways in which their daughter's properties of what she acquired while she was still alive can be protected because the family is saying that uh, our doctor uh, our daughter worked hard to acquire the property and so we want to ensure that all the investments she left behind are safe i mean after of course we know that investigations are still ongoing but still being the main suspect there i don't know how people can get the strength and even energy to in addition you know decide to just sell off all the other properties that the person owned but anyway that's that like you said obviously investigations are still ongoing still the, still on the front page of the same paper yes we know we are still on the cancer awareness month and now um Acting DG for Health, that is Dr. Patrick Amoth, says that now there's an alarm over the uptake of cancer screening and uh, uh, saying that most of the cancer cases are, 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 are as a result of that, the low uptake on that. Uh, on that. And he was actually saying this, this during the launch of um, Breast Cancer Awareness Action Plan of 2021-2025 at the Nakuru Level 5 Hospital. Away from that, to matters politics now. Uh, where Jimmy Wanjigi asks ask the ODM leader Raila Odinga to brace for laws that is during those primaries, say, primaries there and he says that he's the best person fit um, for uh, the president next year and also saying that um, when it comes to the party, that is the ODM party, it's not based on individuals nonetheless but it's actually based on the policies that uh, someone comes with, that is what he is saying there and we also have
of uh, Anne Kananu to be sworn in today as the new Nairobi governor. She becomes the sixth one to take up that particular office uh, from the position of the deputy gov governor as six, uh, as five others have also done that uh, in various counties, counties of Bumet, there's Nyeri, Kiambu, um, as well as... Um, Yamira, who have also taken up positions, perhaps following either death of the governor who was there or perhaps impeachment, like what we saw in Kiambu there. So that is what is going to be happening today in Nairobi County. And also, just continuing to talk about the number of death cases and crimes that have been reported in the country, there's also an article that has been released, or better still, a report that has been released by the police force showing that there's an alarm as young lives cut short in crimes of passion, just giving detailed report of some of these uh, cases that they've had to handle and saying that most of them have been persons under the age of 30 years and this has happened in just a span of one year like I mentioned again very detailed report there by the police service uh, indicating that and again also going by what we have there in regards to the IEBC enlisting they had previously said that they're not going to extend it further we know that this is supposed to end on 4th of um, November there, and they had alluded that the fact that, they, that there was no enough finances to actually extend it. And again, also the article highlights some of the areas and counties where there has been least voter uh, registration. And key among these counties are those counties where I really expect to get a high voter registration, but that has not been the case in regards to that IEBC matter. And also, the DP, as he's just been continuing to popularize his bid, saying that he credits a lot the head of state, that is President Uhuru Kenyatta because uh, of um him making it easy uh, for him to, to popularize his bid, especially in the mountain, and also just trying to say that uh, part of why he has been campaigning so much is because the president sort of allowed him and, uh, you know, made him see the need to start those campaigns early, especially in the mountain. That is areas of Mount Kenya. Ray. This morning we have on the front page matters of politics and that is the Mudavadi question here. Mudavadi under pressure to support Raila. Well, this particular scribe uh, prefers to go with this kicker saying that until two weeks ago, NC leader was busy on a campaign trail just like Deputy President William Ruto and ODM leader. Uh, but he has since cooled off amid revelations that powerful forces within the government want him to back the former Prime Minister. Will he? The last time we had um, Musalia Mudavadi taking a job at, or rather a shot at the top seat there, we all remember the infamous uh, uh, conversation uh, or rather talk a response to this after he failed to appear for the third horse signing there that involved Martha Karua, Peter Kenneth and himself there. He was missing conspicuously just a few hours to the deadline of registering a political party that would see them propel them to the third horse race then. So will he be willing to support the former premier? Is this true? Remember, this are just, uh, you know, what is happening in hush-hush tones there behind the scenes. But as you said, in politics is quite a long time. We're sure going to know um, exactly what his position is. Uh, according to Ayub Savula, though, of ANC, that is the ANC vice chair, he says, the script is, that script is being fronted by some powerful individuals who are pushing Musali and some of our members to support Raila. But... We want to assure our supporters that his name will be on the ballot paper. That is according to ANC Vice Chair Ayub Savula responding to these allegations or rather, you know, whispers in undertones there in regard to the stand of Musalia Mudavadi ahead of uh, the 2022 uh, elections there, Uhuru succession there. This comes at a time when we know the mountain is quite taking a different turn there. Uh, when it comes to who supports the president, who is going to be filling his shoes as the Mount Kenya um, preferential leader there. There's been so much conversation. And we also had um, that particular case of, you know, uh, the, 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 the crowds and how they reacted to Deputy President Williams' Ruto visit in Busia. So far, eight people have been uh, arrested in regard to that, uh, that matter there. However, on the front page of the standard this morning, Uhuru gave me secrets to climb Mount Kenya, says Deputy President William Ruto. So 
uh, this is a conversation uh, that is going to take on, you know, serious matters, you know, dissecting and such, as we had with, you know, as we had to eye on politics with Victor Law. I'm sure he's going to be looking at the Musalia issue, as well as Deputy President there, as well as what the scaffold that happened in Busia. So do keep it here for details. The front page, uh, we're still not done. Matters of Senator in Gun Drama. And apparently he surrenders. I'm talking about none other than um, Senator Lamu Senator Anwar Lloyd Tip, Tip, who was in hospital there. Uh, so the deputy county commissioner, like Kipia East, said he was briefed on Saturday night of the incident. This is where a 32-year-old woman is nursing gunshot wounds at the Nanyuki Teaching and Referral Hospital after a confrontation erupted between her and the Lamu Senator Anwar Loitip Tip. Apparently, conversation, or rather, the talk here, this, uh, the, the, the story goes on to say that this is not the first uh, incident that uh, the senator has found himself in, in the middle of, and as far as, you know, aggression is concerned. So we'll be keeping tabs on that. As well as the story on, you know, the journalist exposed, exposes cover-up in the murder of a Kenyan by the UK soldier. And this has been captured in... Um, not this particular paper, it has been captured, an excerpt of it actually has been captured in this particular paper, but the story has been carried on um, uh, Saturday the 24th, uh, actually this is Sunday the 24th, uh, on the Sunday Times there, uh, where according to the Sunday Times uh, reports that the British soldier had sex with a woman before killing her and dumping her body in a septic tank. The suspect has uh, dismissed the allegations as rumors and despite his name coming up in the several investigations several times. So, so much is happening. People are killing each other, especially, you know, um, people who are in relationships. And I think this has already been carried by uh, the other uh, daily there, and that is, to be specific, the star, so you can get further details as you continue sampling those headlines uh, as based or rather informed by the various dailies that we have. In as far as matters of culture and tradition are concerned, I'm sure whenever a woman is pregnant and that baby comes forth, there is, I don't know if Jane Doreen, and I'm leaving out Victor, because uh, when it comes to pregnancy, man, uh, <laughs> our men folk are more like, you know, n passive partners. By passive partners. Yes, passive partners. And I'm choosing that, I'm choosing my words very, very carefully. So the question of the evil eye. I don't know if it exists in your tradition, oh. where even when you, uh, when you give birth to a child, you do not just allow everybody to come view the child. And you'll see a majority of times that the mother, the mother always covers the face of the child and does not just allow everyone to come visit. Now, there's a special report here in this particular daily, when the evil eye causes fever and a swollen stomach. I think we need to talk. Jane, your, your roots. Even I'm most recently there. <laughs> yes, your roots. <laughs> well, I have heard of the evil eye, yeah. but not to a point where it has had any direct impact on me on either of my two pregnancies, you know, with my daughter and my son. But personally, when it comes to keeping my child away from the public, number one, my son was born during smack the middle of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So that was one thing for me. No visitors were allowed to come see the baby. Kamani kumona, technology came through, mnamonia via Zoom. And also when it comes to covering the baby, especially in the public places, Personally, I would do so just because of dust and maybe sunlight, but I'm not pro covering the child excessively. Number one, heat is a factor. Breathing is also another issue. But you've mentioned uh, swelling and fever, swelling of the stomach and a fever as a result of the evil eye. That I've never heard of. I know fevers are related to if the baby has an infection or just post the vaccines. That is as far as I can go when it comes to that conversation. <laughs> but it's not clear. <laughs> but, but let me say, actually, from where I come from, it's actually a thing. And that swelling of the stomach, fever, sometimes there's even swelling of the, what are this, the, the gums. 
they just swell. And so what I used to see, I think this is from Ushago, even from what grandmothers used to do, there's this nyamayangurue. Uh, so after they've boiled, after they've uh, yeah, boiled it, so sometimes when they mafuta yake, so that mafuta, they would take it and then they would apply it on the baby somewhere here. And then there was, that, there, there was another jivu, I can't remember how they used to tengeneza it, how they used to make it rather, but it was just like grayish, grayish, so they would make the child, um, what was it? They would apply also on, on top of the forehead and sometimes even on the, on the tongue. So they would believe that that would pre prevent uh, the evil eye because again, there was always, especially in, 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 in upcountry areas, that is more prevalent there. But the evil eye is especially so much in those areas. So they would use that as a preventive measure so that even if you look at that child with your evil eye, evil intentions, whatever it is that you do to the child, won't happen to that child. So sometimes when that when the child would uh, um, have swelling gums, fever, stomach pains, they would always believe that this is not a disease. This is just an evil eye. So this is why they would always use that. So from where I come from, my culture, it's actually a thing. It exists. At evil eyes are <laughs> true. But again, based on the Christianity values that I think they have been upheld in, upheld in me. And science. And science, you know, <laughs> like I'm saying, you know, fever, swelling of gum, sometimes that comes with the, how the baby is growing. So I just did not get why they would really think this is indeed an evil eye. But also, again, even some Christians will tell you that much as we are Christians and much as we are science, that still exists. Mm. And much as Ray, has a hold. Yeah, and much as Ray wanted to remove Victor from this conversation, I feel like he's even more... No, 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 no. I'm, I'm actually, actually getting to Victor. Yeah. I'm actually I getting like to Victor. <laughs> I wanted to hear from the ladies here. Uh, I remember my grandmother telling me... Um, <laughs> And she's not, he's laughing. He has more insight. She was not talking <laughs> about uh, generally my children. She was just saying, Yeah? Yeah? Whoever who is going to look at yeah. you with an evil eye, consider them your enemy. She said it, and God bless her soul. I still believe so. There are people who will smile at you today, mm. but turn around and stab you in the back. And they will go for what is very valuable to you. And yeah, for yeah. a family point of view, especially a woman, it's your child. Now, I want to rope in um, uh, Victor on this. So according to this particular research that has been, ta uh, this is um, according to Japanese anthro anthropologist Makio Matsuzono, who is now 82 and lives in Nyaribarichache, lived in Nyaribarichache, in the 1970s and carried out extensive studies among the Kisi uh, from their family planning to their funeral rites and believe in evil eyes. Her research is titled Rubbing Off the Dirt, Evil Eye Belief Among the Gusi. Mm -hmm. So in that particular report, there's a section for the loo. Here, uh, you're going to confirm to us, Victor. The loo had jatak a medicine man specializing in healing ailments occasioned by the evil eye, while in other communities, people carry amulets with them to protect themselves from the evil eye. Hey, in as much as we are educated and Christians, there's an aspect of our African tradition that we cannot just ignore. Victor, Jatak, do those <laughs> people exist? Well, um, I believe in the olden days they did exist. Uh, we, we can't deny that. Well, I've never experienced one. Um, but in the olden days, my, one of my aunties told me that, you know, in the village when a child was born, a child is quite delicate in mm -hmm. terms of touch, breath, everything. You know, the lungs have not yet developed, you know, the hair, everything. So children or young babies were being protected from external, you know, touch. You don't know somebody that may talk about you. You see, like right now, we have got sanitizers all over. The whole essence was to cover the baby. Anytime you're going to a public place, you must cover your baby from direct sun, all right, because the baby's skin is still fragile and delicate. And you can imagine when you walk with your baby for like around just even for one hour to the hospital and you know in the village way back in the days they never had such kind of you know means of transport so you'd either walk or 
find any means of transport to wherever you're going to. So that is one of them. Number two, when you talk of, you know, mtu ametoka shambani, amekuja, eh, uko na mtoto, eh, you know, from one hand to another, just like that, and the infections would just occur from one hand to another. That is one reason, again, why kids were not being subjected to many hands. Unamuona tu akiweka pale kwa baby coat, and that's it, all right? Until a certain age where he or she has completely developed the body immune system, and then at that's the point that, you know, people are allowed now to carry the baby. That is why, even at some point, babies were allowed to stay indoors for a very long time, maybe a week or two without even going outside, all right? So that you don't expose them to such. But evil eye, mm -hmm. I don't deny that they don't exist. I believe that people who have all manner of intentions. Because, let me just say, um, a certain family does have, do not have kids, or they had kids, but one way or another, something, some things happen to them, all right? Either they are drunkards, you know. Let me just leave it at that. So, on a semaile weevil, all right? Ah, so so and so is bringing up for the new life. Uh, uh huh. Memoana. Okay, this one is going to not make it. This one is not going to crack at that particular age. So I think certain things used to happen way back in the years. But let me ask you, Regina, hmm. why are we not having such kind of evil eyes in the urban setup? Who One said they're not? Let me give you a case in point, and I'm going to borrow to uh, yeah. uh, borrow a story. Um, that was making social media headwinds, uh, mm. he headlines as well as mainstream media. The mother of the lady, the old lady, in Kisi. It did not happen in the hinterlands of Kisi. You know? They actually, a whole village, witnessed the brutal murder of the 79, I think, year old woman mm. on account of her being a witch. Uh, when I asked around, um, some of my colleagues and friends actually told me they totally believe that witchcraft exists in their communities and that is why they do not go home. They do not go machinani. When they come to the urban centers, they totally avoid going back home. So for them, it actually uh, exists such that if they go home, they will lose their property, some will even you get ailments. But on that note, have you had an experience when it comes to African culture and tradition that you want to share with us? We are open. You can get us on Twitter at KBC Channel 1. For now, we take a quick breather. describes this morning just sampling and also wanting to hear your views in matters of tradition and culture and we were talking about the presence of that evil eye or rather do you believe in witchcraft does witchcraft exist as far as you're concerned I'm of the opinion good and bad exist in equal measure yes I'm a Christian I went to school I believe in medical science but there are some things you just can't ignore or sweep under the carpet and say they do not exist because they haven't happened to you. I have interacted with people who have said that they have actually uh, gone through such and they had to take, um, you know, traditional way out, Remedies. so to speak. And according to this particular article, I just want to read a small excerpt before to move on to another subject. And this is a report that has been dubbed um, the evil eye, you know, rubbing off the evil eye. Believe it or not, it's actually a subject matter. It is a subject matter, so to speak. I don't know where I lost it. Uh, there we go, there we go, there we go. So uh, this is a research title, Rubbing Off the Dirt, Evil I Believe Among the Goosey. So this is just an excerpt there. So they go out and say, you know, Mats Matsusono, the writer, or rather the author of this particular you know, research, she says, uh, social anthropologists, uh, anthropologists have paid little attention to the evil I believe compared to witchcraft or the spirits of the dead. Mm. It seems clear lack of interest has stemmed from the primacy of other causes of misfortunes 
uh, in the social life, coupled with an, an anthropologist focus on study on intra-community rather than inter-community interactions. Well, if you want to read her copy, Google is your friend. The research is dubbed rubbing off the dirt, evil eye belief among the goosey. But it also talks about other communities. And I wish we had someone from Goosey there, uh, knowing that the power of the red color, maybe <laughs> that's why Mbaramba is usually dressed in red. I do not know. But They're Re saying Regina, here. Mbarambamba. Regina, yes? I think uh, it's not um, cast on stone that one particular community, it's, it's quite mm. prevalent. We just have to demystify that. Yes. I think it's part of the study that um, yes. from where is. I come from, Mm -hmm. In my family, it doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. And I come from that part of Nyanza, so mm -hmm. it doesn't exist in my family, though there are some particular families. Yes. You know, when you go back to their history, they had issues and issues. Probably it even started from their forefathers. True. And it, it follows that generation to generation to generation. So uh, you find that, uh, like that story you're saying, that a certain family were not allowed to go back to the village. Yeah. Because when you go back to the village, certain things would happen. Yes such exist mm. but uh, largely you it know, is that just kind of pockets you're just saying yeah. there are pockets of these things that exist but because they haven't happened to you we should not someone who comes out and says that this exists we should not uh, just like ignore because it hasn't happened to us we need to be alive to the fact that there are things mm. that happen out of our control away from science away Absolutely. from Christianity they just exist and I'm not picking on uh, various communities no I have just this is the title of that report but mm. it also encompasses what it has is happening in uh, Trukana there's also an excerpt of what is happening you know some communities in law it just is a whole report you know when you do conduct a research you take different communities and their findings so I just saw the mention of the power of color red and I can see all of us have at least touch a of touch red. of red Victor has a red tie, mm -hmm. Jane has a red tie, I have a dress that has some red there, we have Dorina Range with some red sleeves, well, the power of red, that is on a very, very light note, Jane. And even as we move from this particular story, um, superstitions still do exist. And you know, it's something as simple as the way you see people, um, when a baby starts having hiccups. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Scientifically, it doesn't make sense. But looking at a cultural or superstitious way of approaching it, to some believe when you put the kakaratasi there, the hiccups will go away. Mm. But hey, to some each their system. own. Mm. Now <laughs> let's come to um, the back page of the Daily Nation. And this is one of the stories that you see on the front page in regards to driving schools and uh, NTSA. So... In 2016, NTSA did uh, put out new rules and regulations when it comes to driving schools and the, what they offer and also looking at the instructors. But now um, the Kenya Driving School as Schools Association has asked the High Court to once again, this is the second time, they have asked the High Court to block NTSA from implementing these new rules, saying that... Um, this uh, directive, uh, which will require over 500 driving schools to apply afresh for operation permits, saying that should this happen, um, the, and these are the words of the KDSA chairman, that is Samuel Karaoke Kamau, that over 700 paid up members, most of whom are now going to face closure. What are some of these rules that um, NTSA has come up with, you may ask? Number one, um, NTSA will send its officials to inspect these driving schools to ensure that they both meet the infrastructural and staff requirements of those facilities. They would also have to have a waiting waiting area, this particular institutions. They should have a waiting area, a management office, theory classrooms with t uh, a model of the town, um, a capacity to hold at least four students seated one square meter apart, okay? Um, they should have washrooms, they should have road signposts that are approved by NTSA. The tutors should, be, uh, should have attained a minimum of a D- minus or an equivalent in KCSE. Um, uh, they also should have a certificate in computer studies. Every school must have a minimum of two instructors and uh, they should also be submitting annual reports to NTSA by the end of January. And uh, what else, what else? 
Yeah, that's just basically what has been listed here. So on the other hand, KDSA says that NTSA did not conduct uh, public participation in regards to this particular uh, rules that they want to bring into place uh, when they were drafting these rules. And then again, KDSA want this, uh, the High Court to once again block NTSA from enforcing these rules as they did back in 2018. But before we even just wrap this whole segment up, do you guys feel like, because um, looking at the rules that are currently in place they were enacted in 1979 Yes, 1971 rather. Yes, the rules that are previously in place were enacted in 1971 and NTSA is looking to bring these new rules into play because they have, uh, according to what they say, most of the road carnages as, are as a result of these outdated um, uh, rules that we have that are not really looking at the times that have, as they have changed. Mm. Mine is a very simple question to all of us. Um, you know, many people do not understand that driving itself is a profession. Mm -hmm. There are people who have lived uh, their entire, all their lives just by being behind the wheels. It's a profession. Why is it, uh, okay, Regina, when was the last time you went for a refresher course? Mm. Are you trying to get me uh, flags? Not, not really. Not no, really. Um, not that, mm. I'm just trying to, 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 <laughs> to push a point. National um, television. Okay. Not in this space. <laughs> the thing is... You may attend. Yes. You see the way we are actually advancing, you know, each and every time we are in a digital era right now, we are in the analog era, and mm -hmm. the government pushed almost all the media houses to go digital. Everything evolves with time. Driving, we have got new vehicles on the road. We know we have got new technologies on the road. We have got new road signs. Perhaps some are still constant, but we have got, you know, four or five lanes now. Initially, we used to have only one or two. But let me ask you, have you ever heard or have you ever seen a driver with an L on the first lane on the highway <laughs> and going at a speed of 30 or 40? on the express lane. Have you ever seen that? With an L. Then you ask yourself, we are talk at driving school, Juzi. Aliambiwa nini kwa driving school. What's the work of the first, second, third, or even fourth lane? Right now, we have got BRT lane. Such are the things now. Ask me, NTSA should act fast. You find a driving school on top of... <laughs> Mrs. Simon. Well, on top of that. Victor, Victor I like yeah. what you're saying. Yeah. I like what you're saying. As we I, but I hope it should be... Actually, I pray... It is mm. enacted, yeah, mm. and implemented, right? And targeting, they start with the PSVs first, because God yeah. of heaven. And they also need to include motorcycle riders, or rather Buddha Buddha riders. Mm. If you ask me, if you look at the report, the NTSA report, yeah, in uh, the number of road accidents that have been caused, a majority of them involved Buddha Buddha riders. This is someone who is going to buy a Buddha Buddha mm. today, get it on the road, carry a passenger. Mm -hmm. No insurance, no training, and a bar t mm. And this tendency of an, an accident involving a Buddha Buddha rider, whether the motorist is on the right or on the wrong, it doesn't matter. Mob justice, mob psychology when it yeah. comes to Buddha Buddha and riders. So it would be a good move, but how do they want to implement it is my question. Uh -huh. Where will they begin? How will they ensure that everyone <coughs> has done this refresher? Because you cannot target person A and not do it for person B because we are all using these roads. Uh -huh. It's like what you do for the Ganda, you do need to do for the goose. Doreen, mm -hmm. as you can tell me. Very, very quickly, <laughs> let me just add on to that. You know, you've mentioned something very important training and try to just pointed towards Buddha Buddha riders and PSVs and also that is largely because when you look at most of these PSV vehicles a good number of those who even turn to drivers unapata mtu alikuwa the tout now kidogo kidogo may turn to the to being yeah. the driver with no proper training no proper understanding of how the road needs to look like and that's why most of them they usually you know nikukasirika tuko barabara and even if they are on the wrong. They don't see how they are actually on the wrong because most of them have not gone through this training. And yes, we know, anytime there's something about change, there's mm. a bit of resistance. But if it's for the good yeah. and the benefit to also try and reduce this number of death cases, then why not? 
Good. Well, we do. Let's wait and see how this will play out if the High Court will listen to um, the Kenya National Driving Schools Association. And with that, we want to put a cap on uh, in the headlines. We have much more coming up, but first, we will have the traffic updates, uh, traffic, traffic updates in a bit. <laughs>